to another edition of Husky Mag. I'm Alexis Pearson and alongside me is Ashley Pearson. Now Ashley, we're transitioning out of those winter sports and into those spring sports. Yeah, Alexis, we're getting into, into the end of the winter season and starting to dabble in those spring sports. Let's jump right into it. St. Cloud State's men hockey was matched up against the University of Nebraska in Omaha this past weekend. And starting things off with Friday's game, in the first period, Robbie Jackson slips the puck into the right side of the net with an assist from Kosla, leading the Huskies 1-0. The Mavericks' very own Luke Nogard shoots and misses, but hopes were still high when Mason Morelli got the rebound and put, and put it in the net. Jackson then assists Benson as he slips it in from the left-hand side. Let's take a look at that replay. Bennett then comes to claim a goal for himself with an assist from Morley. Bennett comes back again to finish it off with an empty netter. The Huskies top the Magras 4-1 on Friday, extending their record to 24-6-1. No surprise, Joey Bennett was lighting the lamp again, leading the team in this game with two goals, putting him at the team leading 19 goals on the season. Freshman Robbie Jackson also netted a goal and an assist. Jacob Benson tallied his third goal of the season as well. Yeah, but not much going for the Mavericks Friday night. The only goal scorer for the Mavericks on Friday was freshman Mason Morelli. That would be his seventh goal of the season. And despite the lack of scoring, the Mavericks got a lot of pucks on net, totaling 32 by the end of the game. But Charlie Lindgren, as always, was solid in nets, only allowing one goal. And the Huskies look for the second win of the weekend against Omaha. The Huskies will get on the board first with Blake Winecki taking a pass from Robbie Jackson and finding the back of the net. Russell now with the second goal of the game for the Huskies, putting them up 2-0. Huskies on the power play. Prow rushing down the ice gets the third goal for the Huskies. Omaha's turn now as Luke Nogard scores the first goal of the game for Omaha. And Jake Gunsel now on the slot, cutting through the Huskies' lead even more. Huskies up only by one now. And now Jacob Benson with the wraparound. Winecki bangs home the Huskies' fourth goal of the game. And now Austin Ortega in the offensive zone snipes one off the post, but Jake Gunsel gets up to bat as he hits one home for the second of the game. Mikey Asamon goes for the stuff play denied, but Cali Kosla will pick up the rebound. The Huskies would go on to win this one 6-3. Now this was a solid win for the Huskies with a lot of different players getting points. Blake Winecki netted two on the night, his 10th and 11th goals on the season. Judd Peterson also got a shorthanded goal on the night, his 14th goal of the season. And third on the team right behind Joey Benick and Patrick Russell. Robbie Jackson also got a couple helpers, leaving him with seven assists on the season. Looking at the other side, Omaha was able to net a couple, but it wouldn't be enough to top the offensive power of St. Cloud. Jake Gunsel was able to sink two past Lindgren, Luke Snuggard, tallied two assists in the game, but the Huskies would finish on top by a score of 6-3. to three. Now let's take a quick look at the NCHC standing. St. Cloud State is tied for first with the University of North Dakota, both holding conference records of 15-4-1. North Dakota is coming off a sweep against Minnesota Duluth and will be playing Omaha next. It's the Huskies' turn to play Minnesota Duluth as they will be facing off against each other this weekend. Denver is trailing right behind with a conference record of 13-5-2, and, and Denver is coming off a sweep against Colorado College and will be playing Western Michigan this weekend. Now switching gears and taking a look at the USCHL poll, St. Cloud State sits in third place behind Boston College and Quinnipiac, with North Dakota trying closely behind with only one game. With Providence, Michigan, Yale, and Denver at the, in the top eight, the Huskies have been moving back and forth between third and fourth and look to continue moving up in the rankings. The St. Cloud State Huskies are set to take on Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs this Friday and Saturday for their last regular season home game. Puck drop for Friday's game is at 8.08 p.m. and Saturday's is set for 7.07. Now switching gears and taking a look at the pairwise ranking, St. Cloud State is still number two with Quinnipiac in the lead and Boston College following closely behind in third with North Dakota and Providence also in the top five. Jumping to the number eight spot, Denver, Notre Dame and Boston University are all tied behind Michigan and Yale. St. Cloud State has stayed up at the very top of the rankings for almost all of the season and, ho and hopefully they can end on a good note. Now I'm here with hockey analyst Joseph Scarella. Now Joe, let's talk some Husky hockey. So the Huskies, they're coming off of a huge sweep in Nebraska. What did you see out of this team against the Mavericks? Uh, the first thing I would say was energy. There was a ton of energy in the first, uh, both games actually, I guess, against Omaha, something that we hadn't really seen in the last few games. And the Huskies had some new contributors on the stat sheet this week, is that right, Joe? Yeah, like I, like I mentioned, the third line kind of stepped up, um, Robbie Jackson, he hadn't got on the board since Omaha the last time they played him here uh, here at the Brooks Center. Um, yeah, he finally found the stat sheet again um, with a goal and three assists, so a huge weekend for him. Um, and then also 
Um, Winnick, you got on the board. Like, like I mentioned, that third line was huge for, uh, for the Huskies this weekend. So let's talk future a little bit. What's kind of coming up next for the Huskies? Well, the Huskies are back home after almost a month on the road. They've had a four-game or excuse six-game road stand that started off with the North Star College Cup that they swept uh, five for six on that road stand. But now they're back home against a huge, uh, a huge rival in UMD. So a huge weekend for uh, the Huskies to try to get a sweep here. Thank you so much, Joe. That's our hockey analyst, Joseph Scarello. We hope to see you again sometime soon. Yeah. Thank you. Now the women's hockey team split the series with Minnesota Duluth last weekend and now it's the men's turn. After coming off a sweep of Omaha, the men will be facing off against the Bulldogs. They traveled to Duluth in January for a matchup against the Bulldogs, coming home with a win and a tie. The games will be played at the Herb Brooks National Hockey Center. Taking a look at the women's hockey team of Minnesota Duluth, starting it off, Molly Ellicanen goes around the goalie to shoot the puck into the net, putting the Huskies on the board one to nothing with a power play goal late in the first period. Vanessa Esparto shoots the puck and hits the post. Lauren Hespinine picks it up and sends it into the goal into the in the second period. Shortly after is what it looks like, a back and forth battle between Huskies and the Bulldogs. Brittany Anderson ends up with an assist to the, on a power play to Lexi Slatery with another goal for the Huskies in the second period, giving the Huskies a 3-0 lead. Bulldogs' Lara Stedler picks up the puck for Emma Turbyville. Stedler then assists Ashley Brekeluck, putting the Bulldogs on the board for the very first time. The Lady Huskies were able to sneak past the Bulldogs with a score of 3-2. Lexi Slater tallied a goal and assist in the game, putting her at 4 goals and 12 assists on the season. Molly Lucanian scored one of the two power play goals in the game, and this goal puts her at the team leading 17 on the season. Yeah, the Bulldogs' two goals would not be enough to beat the Huskies on Friday. Ashley Brickelick tallied a goal and a helper, putting her at 16 goals and 25 assists on the season. And juniors Laura Stalder got two assists on the night. She now has 19 assists on the season. And goaltender Maddie Rooney only faced 15 shots on the night, but gave up three to the Huskies. Moving on to the WCHA standings, Wisconsin is sitting at the top with Minnesota and Bemidji State. North Dakota all following behind St. Cloud State is in the number five spot with a conference record of 9, 14, and 4 with an overall record of 13, 15, and 4. Night two of the Huskies versus Bulldogs matchup. Huskies looking for the sweep. Starting it off, Suvi Alakainen finds Hannah Petrakis with the feed pass. Petrakis with a diving play. Huskies up 1-0. Morgan Morris down the right wing gets the shot. Pushed away by Fitzgerald. Michelle Lowenhelm finds the back to get the rebound. Game's all tied up. Maria Lynn dancing around the circle. Snipe shot. Bulldogs up 2-1. to one. Taking a second look at this one. She gets the pass and sneaks that one past Fitzgerald. Unchallenged by the Husky defense. Lynn sneaks one past the glove side. Julia Tilke now for the Huskies. Walks her way to the front of the net. Tied game. Taking another look at this one. Tilke slides it right past the right pad of goaltender Kayla Black. Bulldogs, however, would go on to win this one 3-2. The Huskies wouldn't be able to pull off the sweep as they fall to the Bulldogs 3-2. Hannah Petrakis found the back of the net for the Huskies, tallying her fifth goal of the season. Julia Tilke was the only other Husky to get one past Kayla Black. Molly Illikanen got her 14th helper of the year, putting her tied at second on the team for assists with goal scorer Julia Tilke. Michelle Lohenheim had a two-goal game for the Bulldogs, her first goal since November 21st against North Dakota. Sydney Moran tallied her 10th and 11th assists on the season, and Maria Lind Lindy got her 5th helper on the season. The WCHA playoffs are set to take place on March 5th and 6th with the number 1 ranked Madison versus number 8 Minnesota State. St. Cloud State ranked at number four, at number 5 excuse me, is taking on North Dakota, who is ranked at number 4. Hopefully some good matchups there, Alexis. I agree. With Minnesota ranked at number 2, they are set to take on the 7th ranked Ohio State. Minnesota Duluth, who is ranked at number six, is taking on number three, Bemidji State. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we can look forward to some good matchups and some upsets here. And coming up next, it's all about basketball. See how the Huskies fared on the court this weekend. And we'll take a look at the NSIC standings. Don't go anywhere. Here at UTVS News, we are always ready for a new day. Welcome to UTVS News tonight at six o'clock. Following the lead. The action. Bench for the extra attacker. Down the bench and it's gone! The tragedies. The unpredictability. And the stories that keep our community informed and together. UTVS News, local news for the Granite City.
visit utvs.com and learn more about SCSU's television station. And with playoff time right around the corner, the St. Cloud State men's basketball team is looking to make a run. As of late, two local teammates have been players to watch for the Huskies. Bobby Bolick has the story. He's tipped away by Stone, and Morte comes up with it. Stone dribbles up to the other end. He lobs it into the lane. Anyone who's familiar with the St. Cloud State men's basketball team has heard the names Scotty Stone. Scotty Stone, a three. He gets the Huskies on the board. And Gage Davis. But as of late, these aren't the only names that have stood out. Down the baseline, double team. Nice pass to Andy Foley. Looks for a shot again. Nothing but the bottom. Tyson, right wing three. Yes, sir! But these two players were no strangers to the spotlight in the St. Cloud community. I grew up in this town watching the basketball games. I mean, having my sister play here however many years back it was nice to come over here and see what Husky basketball is all about. Andy Foley, who is known for lighting up scoreboards, ended his career on top of the leaderboard for total points ever scored at Tech High School. He was named All-Area Player of the Year, averaging 24 points a game his senior season. Well, he is so versatile. He does so many things. He can score, he passes it very well, he's become a better defender and he's rebounded it well. He's one of those guys that knows every position on the floor and, and you can just really throw him out there anywhere. Fully signed with St. Cloud State University early his senior year after feeling it was the best fit for him to stay close to home. We've been telling him since day one um, just to be aggressive and be, be yourself like the kid that we recruited out of high school. Brinley Tyson, who is also known to be found on the front page of the morning paper, ended his career with the most points ever scored in St. Cloud's history. It's nice to be close to home. If I need something, it's right there. Um, and my family and my, my parents and grandparents and siblings can come to all the home games and they still can come to a majority of the away games. So. But I think the thing that attracted me to the most to him is his poise and leadership. Um, he's a very confident young man, carries himself very well. Um, and he's just one of those guys you like being around for four years. Well, Burnley uh, has range out to 25 feet, you know, has great mechanics on the shot, and he's a learner. He loves to be coached, he loves to learn, he's always asking questions. So you can't ask, I mean, for anything better than that. Although both flourished at the high school level, it took them both some time to get accustomed to the college game. <laughs> Brinley is, the first couple weeks, he's been just up and down. He's just trying to find his feel, when to take his shots. As the season got going, um, it really kind of turned into a roller coaster where I, would either, I felt like I was playing well at times and all of a sudden things weren't going uh, as I thought they would. Threw me through the loop right away, just not having the ball always in my hands. Well, the first year and a half or so, the physicality, you know, he's got to get stronger and he knows that. Um, his defense was a little lacking too, but more importantly, just his overall aggressiveness wasn't where it needed to be. It's improved and that's the number one thing with him. Uh, where early on, when he would touch the ball and when he felt he needed to shoot it, rather than right now, he knows when to shoot it. To be now, the last couple weeks, he's gotten much more aggressive and he's gained some confidence and he's playing at a very high level for us. But as time progressed, that struggle has turned into the start to a new beginning with these two hometown teammates. Bobby Bolig, UTBS News. With Andy Foley and Brinley Tyson, the men's team looks to be a team to watch as they finish up their regular season and head into playoffs this week. The Huskies fell short by a score of 97-89, taking their second straight loss. Gage Davis led the team in points with 24, followed closely by Mark Hall and Scotty Stone with 20 and 19 points respectively. The Huskies trailed 48-37 after the first half and kept it close the second half. 
outscoring Minot State by three with a score of 52 to 49, but it wouldn't be enough to top the Minot Beavers as their record falls to 12 to 15. Now, Minot State played a strong game. Nathan Mertens led the team in points with 24. Chris Davis finished with 16 points and Winston Williams with 15. This was Minot State's third straight win, finally bumping them to a winning record with a record of 14 and 13 on the season. And now Friday may not have been the outcome the Huskies were hoping for, but Saturday they fared well against the University of Mary. Now starting it off, Gage Davis splits two defenders and drives to the net and finishes with the right hand. Taking a second look at this one, Davis with the tough finish in traffic. University of Mary now, Brandon Tyler takes the pass and goes for the three-pointer. And Tyler now with the pass to Isaac Lindquist, who pulls up from the corner to put some more on the board for University of Mary. And Scotty Stone now on the transition, stops on a dime and finds Davis for the alley-oop. Checking this one out again, the beautiful feed from Stone to Davis, who is able to finish the play mid-air. And now after falling to Minot State, the Huskies were able to pick up a road win against the University of Mary on Saturday. The Huskies would top the Marauders by a score of 80-73. to Gage Davis led the team once again with 25 points, putting him at second on the team for points, trailing behind only Scotty Stone, who also had 25 points against the Marauders. The Huskies trailed the Marauders after the first half by a score of 37-33, but finished the second strong with 47 points to the Marauders' 36. 73 points wouldn't be enough to beat the Huskies. The Marauders got handed their first loss since February 6th. Freshman Brian Jefferson led the team in points with 18. Jefferson leads the team in points with 444. The Marauders tack on their 11th loss of the season, finishing the night with a record of 17-11. Taking a look at, the, at all things men's basketball, NSIC standings. MSU Moorhead is leading at number one with a conference record of 19 to three and overall record of 27 to four. With Northern, Northern State, U Mary, and Minnesota of Duluth all falling behind. St. Cloud State is at number five with a conference record of 10 to 12 and an overall record of 13 to 15. The Huskies look to move up in the rankings before their season comes to an end. And the Beavers ended up beating the Huskies with 73-63 as the final score. For the Huskies, some keynote players were Andrea Thomas with 13 total points and 10 rebounds, Chelsea Nooker with 12 total points and 5 rebounds, and Chris Le Captain with 12 points and 5 rebounds. For the Beavers, Sarah Lester led the team with 30 points and 8 rebounds, and Savannah Kingsbury had 8 points and 10 rebounds. Corey Ar Archick also contributed to the Beaver success with seven points and two assists. It was a tough battle between these two, but it was the Huskies that would rise above. Taking a look at women's basketball Friday night, starting off for the Marauders is Rachel Wire, who drives from the baseline and gets through the defense and finishes it with the left hand. Then it's Huskies with some nice ball movement from Betsy to McDonald to Chelsea Nooker, who finds Crystal the captain inside for the two. The captain had 19 points to the game, and it's the Marauders, Haley Hibbs, who passes to Brittany Deitz, who then favors the pass back to Hibbs, who then drills the three. Hibbs again showing the reins as she knocks down another from long distance. And then for the Huskies, it's Betsy McDonald who cleans up the, ma the miss and finishes inside. Hibbs again playing catch with Tori Mahaffey. Hibbs ends up with the ball and shoots another three. The ladies took their fourth straight loss against University of Mary. St. Cloud was outscored every quarter except for the third, where they posted a score of 18-10. But it wouldn't be enough. Crystal the captain led the team in points of 19. Chelsea Nooker had 12 points on the game, and Betsy McDonald and Andrew Thomas tallied 11 points. For the University of Mary, Brittany Dietz put up an impressive 25 points against the Huskies. She is now seven points shy of becoming U Mary's all-time leading scorer. Haley Hibbs racked up 14 points in the game, and Hannah Larson had 11. Now let's take a look at the women's NSIC standings. The Lady Huskies are sitting right in the middle of the pack at fourth with a conference record of 12 and 10. They trail behind Northern State MSU, and MSU Moorhead who both hold conference records of 17 and 5. And Minnesota Crookston who sits right ahead of the Huskies with a conference record of 14 and 8. The Huskies have dropped four straight including losses to the top two conference teams Northern State and Minnesota State Moorhead. And after the break, we'll give you results from the men and women's swim and dive meets and the wrestling meet. And we'll hit the golf course for a preview of the upcoming season. Stay tuned. You're watching UTVS, local TV for the Granite City.
Visit utvsnews.com for all of your local news. You're watching UTVS, local TV for the Granite City. You're watching UTVS, local TV for the Granite City. The wrestling team was in action this weekend hosting the August stand of Vikings. They took down the Vikings by a score of 36 to 3. They have not given up more than five points to their opponents since January 16th against University of Wisconsin Parkside. The Huskies have won 44 consecutive dual matches. Their last loss coming against Augustana in January of 2011. Senior VJ Julio had an outstanding night with a fall one minute and seven seconds into his match against against Clayton Wallstrom. Brett Velasquez also pinned his opponent Duncan Stobner. The only victory on the night for Augustana was in the 184 pound weight class with Arrow Ammo beating Youthman Rabai. And the Huskies swim and dive was in action on Saturday. The Huskies finished third in the conference meet with a total of 654 points, trailing behind only Delta State University and Henderson State University. David Suffolk led the team on Saturday, placing first in the men's three-meter diving. Scott Stellick placed third in the same event. Justin Winnett placed second in the 200 breaststroke with a time of 159.11, and the team placed second in the 400 freestyle relay. Third place overall at conference with a total points of 1,409 points. SU's men's, men's and women's swim team has just come back from competing at the New South Intercollegiate Conference Championships in Cleveland, Mississippi. Madison Golden joins us now in the studio. Now Madison, the Huskies swim team is coming off a very big conference meet. How did they do overall? The Huskies performed exceptionally well at this conference meet. Both the wins and women's team placed third overall, which considering it's a conference meet and it's not a typical dual meet with just two teams, that's pretty outstanding for the Huskies swim team. I agree. And what were some of the outstanding swims of the weekend? So first of all, once again, we have Justin Winnette, who took second overall in the 200 breaststroke. And then looking at Tristan Ferguson, he took third overall in the 100 freestyle with a time of 45.90, which is exceptionally fast, especially considering that this men's 100 freestyle can be pretty competitive. And mm -hmm. he's only a freshman, so not only is he a great asset to the team, he's also a great asset to the relay teams, who, which he also swims on the 400, medley, the 400 freestyle relay as well as the 200 freestyle relay. And then going over to the women's side, we have um, Brooke Calvin, who took fourth overall in the 200 breaststroke, and Aaron Hart, who took fourth overall in the 200 backstroke. So both those women contributed to that third place overall out of seven teams for the women's swim team. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, it sounds like we had a swim meet that had a great swim team that had a great meet. Um, what's coming up as far as like the future for both teams? So the teams are both heading to the NCAA Division II Championships in Indianapolis on March 9th, and we can hope to see more good swims across the board from some of our frontrunner Husky swim team. All right. Thank you, Madison. Thank you. And now the Huskies are looking to improve on their play from last fall as the spring ushers in a new start for the team. The Huskies aim to send their two seniors, Matt Bible and Chase Hain, off on a good note as they enter their final fall season as St. Cloud State Huskies. The Cardinal and Black have the Winona State invite to start them off, followed by the Battle of the Falls. And then they get to watch their home then they get to their home meet, which they have had plenty of success at. And they will finish off their start at the 2016 NSIC Championship. The Huskies will look for their freshman all-star Troy Rinnanen to keep up his success and for the two seniors to finish on a high note. And coming up next, we close out the show with our favorite segments. A little bit with some snow turning over to rain as we go through the day tomorrow. Currently, it's 44 degrees. The rain did start to come down again. We had a short break there.
family fun for all ages. Powder Ridge Winter Recreation Area. Enjoy skiing, snowboarding, snow tubing just minutes south of St. Cloud. They provide rental equipment, lessons, two food service areas, and lounge. Check out their website at powderridge.com. You're watching UTVS, local TV for the Granite City. Welcome back, and now we've got Husky happenings for you here first. Let's find out what's coming up next for St. Cloud State Sports. The wrestling team will be competing in regionals this weekend in Sioux Falls, only two weeks away from nationals. And men's basketball will be traveling to Iowa to take on Upper Iowa. And both hockey teams are in action this weekend, with the women's playing in the first round of the WCHA playoffs and the men taking on Minnesota Duluth at the Herb Brooks Hockey Center. Now for Husky Mag's Player of the Week, we have number 23 freshman forward Robbie Jackson. Jackson continues to prove he's meant to be on the ice as he was an asset this weekend coming off a great weekend against the University of Nebraska Omaha. Jackson had one goal and three assists throughout the weekend to contribute to the Husky sweep against the Mavericks. The Huskies look to continue to utilize Jackson as they take on the University of Minnesota Duluth this weekend for their last home game of the regular season. Well, Ashley, it's time for our favorite part of Husky Mag, Blizzard's Best. Let's take a look at the top plays of the week. Starting, up, starting off at number three, we have Gage Davis sneaking through the players of you, Mary, to go for a left-handed layup to the score for the Huskies. Let's take a look at that again in slow motion. And sitting at number two is Hannah Petrakis from St. Cloud State's women's hockey team. Subi Olakana tosses to Petrakis, who shoots it in the net from the right-hand side, sliding into the net in the process to put the Huskies up 1-0. There's a second look at that play for you. That's our number two play of the week. For the third, for the um, number one play of the week, we have number 23, Robbie Jackson, shooting into the right side of the net with an assist from Borgen early on in the first period to put the Huskies up one nothing. From all of us here at Meg, Husky Meg, thanks for joining us. I'm Alexis Pearson and this is Ashley Pearson. We'll see you next week for more Husky Sports. Here at UTVS News, we are always ready for a new day. Welcome to UTVS News tonight at 6 o'clock. Following the lead. The action. Bench for the extra attacker. Down the bench and it's gone. The tragedies. The unpredictability. And the stories that keep our community informed and together. UTVS News, local news for the Granite City.